Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about composing facial features for unconventional characters. Uh, we have a character on the screen with a big nose, it's a long exaggerated nose. So when it comes to creating a nose like this uh, for a 360 head, we can it can present a few challenges. So we're going to talk about how to set up these uh, nose, uh, this nose with separate components with a hierarchy and uh, talk about uh, doing it in Photoshop. We're going to be using the Photoshop pipeline and uh, naming conventions in Photoshop, as well as using the attach feature for facial components in Cartoon Animator 4. So let's take a look at the character um, to start here, okay? So what we have is a typical character with right eye, left eye, right brow, left brow, mouth, you know, all the general components here. The one we're gonna be focusing on is the nose on this character. And currently the nose is just this big nose. Um, all the components are together. We have like two uh, lumps, two bumps on the nose there and, and the snout and the, and the tusks and everything like that are all together. Um, so what we need to do, uh, this presents a challenge where we're trying to create a 360 head and I'll show you why in just a moment here. So let's go first over to the 360 head creator, okay? Now in the 360 head creator, I'm gonna start out in the quick head turn setup, okay? And I'm gonna go to like, just uh, set my maximum angle to 22 just to make things not so exa exaggerated. Uh, for left and right here. And I'm going to show you why this presents a problem. Because generally if you're having a, a nose that looks like it's long like this and it's facing forward the entire time, it's going to present a problem if you have like, you know, if you want to make it look like it's at a 22 degree angle. So generally what you try to do is kind of maybe resize it a little bit smaller and move it over here a little bit. But because it's one single component, it's not really looking that good. It looks like the nose is kind of crooked. Uh, we can, you know, do the same thing for the other side as well. Um, you know, try to resize it and, and move it over here and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And you can try to apply that even though it doesn't look good. You can try to apply that and refine it using the 360 head creator. Let's go to the left side here. You can try to use stuff like deform and change the perspective, you know, just down like this. And uh, you know, it's looking a little bit better, but it still looks very messy. And, you know, it's not going to have good results in the end. So let's just go ahead and clear everything from the left side here. It's going to go back to normal here and uh, clear everything from the uh, the right side as well. Um, we need to clear the perspective or the deform as well here. Okay, and everything's clear on this side and this side. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to the center uh, angle point here and close this down, and we're gonna launch it in Photoshop. Now again, this is only available with the pipeline version of Cartoon Animator, okay? So let's go ahead and give this a launch in our external PSD editor. I'm just going to change the head scale, leave it at uh, one to one here. Current angle is fine and go ahead and launch it. So what we're going to see in Photoshop, let's take a look at analyzing these, uh, these layers here in Photoshop. Now the RL bone, you don't have to worry about. This is just the bones for the character's body. If we make that invisible, you'll see the neck and the, the head bone, the spine bone there will kind of disappear and we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Just ignore that for now. RL image is the same way. We don't have to worry about that. This is only for body. RL bone and RL image are only for body. However, this bone one uh, with the arrow pointing to RL talking head, this is the one we need to take, take a look at. Let's twirl this down and take a look at the two folders. First, we have this folder called head bone. Now head bone, it contains all these yellow crosshairs, okay? Now each one of these yellow crosshairs represents a certain facial component, like the uh, the nose, for example. There's the right ear. If we make that invisible, you can see the right ear bone will disappear there. Um, there's a front hair one that'll disappear. Okay, uh, the nose one will disappear right there. Uh, left eye. So all these bones are the are basically the the bones that drive the sprite movement in Cartoon Animator 4. All right. Now we're not going to worry about any of these bones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make them all invisible except for the nose bone, okay? We're just gonna keep the nose bone and copy this bone a little bit later on. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Okay, so under the center folder here, now this used to be called head image in Crazy Talk Animator 3, um, not, but now because we have 360 heads, we have different profiles. And currently we're only dealing with the center profile facing the camera, okay? Now you can see here, all of these different folders here correspond with the different layers in Cartoon Animator, left eye, right eye, left ear, right ear. If we go back into Cartoon Animator, you can see left ear, right ear, all the same components, okay? So all these sprites correspond with these layers in Photoshop, okay? Very important to keep that in mind. Now, to keep things simple, we're only gonna be dealing with the nose in this uh, tutorial, okay? So under the nose, you'll find a sprite, a folder called Normal, 
And in there, you'll find a sprite called normal, okay, or a layer in Photoshop, okay? And this is the entire nose. As you may recall, it was all one, one layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this. I'm going to delete the normal folder here as well, okay? And now we have nothing in the nose folder. And we have a character with no nose. Now, luckily, what I have here is I have a number of uh, layers in my source file here. And we have these all in separate components or separate layers, okay? So there's the nose tip, the nose nearest right there. We have nose bridge two, which is this one, nose bridge one. And we have the nose or the normal, which is the uh, background here. We have teeth left, which is the tusk, and teeth right, which is the other tusk, okay? Let's just control Z all those movements and get them back into position there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import all of these layers into my uh, project, okay? So let's go ahead and shift select them all, and I'm going to click and drag directly into this project right here, and we can place them wherever we want. We can probably use our arrow key to bring them down a little bit, down arrow key, bring it down to somewhere proper like that. I think that'll be fine and dandy where it is. Maybe a little bit to the uh, right here as well. Just try and get these in a generally good position. Okay, I'm fine with that. Maybe down a little bit further. Okay, anyways, we're not gonna worry too much about the specific positioning. But what we have right now is under nose, now we have all these different layers. Okay, now the only layer that we want under nose is the normal layer, okay? Because noses in a Cartoon Animator 4 they can have different sprites in their sprite library. Okay, they can have a normal nose, they can have a scrunched up nose, and there's naming conventions for all of these that we'll talk about in future tutorials. But for now, we're only going to deal with the normal nose, okay? So your, your default nose sprite needs to be named normal, okay? Keep that in mind, it's very important. The default nose sprite needs to be named normal, and it needs to be under the nose folder, okay? Because the nose folder represents the nose sprite, okay? And under the nose, nose sprite, we have a sprite library. Under the nose folder, we have a bunch of nose layers. All right, and we'll talk about that in future tutorials. But for now, I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna shift and select all these other nose components here. And I'm gonna click and drag them out of the nose folder because they're not technically gonna be part of the nose, okay? We're just gonna bring them out of the nose folder here above the nose layer, and here we go. So we have them all as separate components, like I mentioned. Uh, whoops, if I don't shift select them, I'll just uh, have them all separate like this. So nose bridge two right here, okay. And you can click and drag them all separately. Now what we need to do is we need to create a separate bone for each one of these layers, okay. It's very important to do that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the head bone folder. Now keep in mind these names, okay. The naming, naming convention has to be the same for the bones. So we have to have a bone name for each one of these layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And the easiest way to do it is to go into your head bone folder and select the nose bone there. And you can right click and duplicate the layer if you want. Okay, some people like to do that. Um, but I'll show you an easier way. The easier way is just to have your layer selected. Make sure you have auto select and just hold alt and click and drag your nose layer. And it's gonna uh, create a copy of that layer. So nose copy right here. We're, we're gonna drag that to the, uh, the bridge one and do the same thing. Uh, alt, left click and drag to bridge two. I'll left click and drag to bridge or to nose nearest. I'll left click and drag to the nose tip. And then finally, I'll left click and drag to the uh, teeth R. I'll left click and drag to the teeth uh, left. Okay. So now we have bones for each one of these uh, sprites, but we need to rename those bones with the exact same naming convention as we have down here. Okay. So keep this in mind nose bridge underscore one, two, and all these other ones. So I copied them in a very specific order. So nose copy is this one here, okay? That first one, this one right here. Do, do, do. We're gonna rename that to nose bridge underscore one, okay? So now that one's finished. Now, if we want to create a hierarchy in Photoshop with the Photoshop naming conventions. So if we want nose bridge two to be attached to nose bridge one, when we, when we save it back into Cartoon Animator, we need to do something a little different here. What we need to do is I need to put nose bridge one, underscore one, before, and then I can press, uh, use the greater than symbol or the arrow key, or whatever you want to call it, and then type in nose bridge underscore two. What this is going to do when we save it back into Cartoon Animator is this is going to create a hierarchy 
in the facial layers where Nosebridge 2 is now a child of Nosebridge 1. Okay, so it's going to create a hierarchy. There's a much easier way to do this in Cartoon Animator, but I just wanted to show you how to do it in Photoshop as this one example here. Okay, so this is actually the bone for Nosebridge 2, but this indicates here that it's attached to Nosebridge 1 when we save it back. Okay, now the next one was called Nose Neris. Okay, Nose Neris. And after that, down the, down the hierarchy here, we had Nose Tip. Okay, and then five and six were these two here. So five was um, teeth underscore uh, R, and six was teeth underscore L, okay? All right, so we have all the bones named correctly now, and we have them all positioned correctly, and we can go from here. So now the next part is very important. If you don't have this part correct, your, your import is going to be uh, messed up. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take all these nose sprites outside of the nose folder, okay? So I'm gonna shift and select these all, and I'm gonna click and drag them above the nose folder, just like this. Okay, if they're in the nose folder, they're going to be saved as, as sprites in the nose library, and that's what we don't want. We want them to be separate sprites outside of the nose, okay? But we're gonna have them driven by the nose. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, go ahead and file and save, and it's gonna automatically update our character in Cartoon Animator 4, and here we go. Okay, and if we go to the scene manager, now you can see we have that nose bridge 1 and nose bridge 2, they're, they have a hierarchy relationship, okay? So like this right here, we can select nose bridge one and nose bridge two together, okay? And if we, there's also nose right here, okay? This one right here, totally separate. So what we wanna do in this case is we wanna create a full hierarchy uh, stemming from the nose. So we want to attach everything to the nose basically. So I'm gonna select nose bridge one and we can use this little attach feature up here, okay? Attach and then just select nose, okay? And now it's gonna be attached to the nose. And if we move the nose, now they're all gonna be moved together. So this is much easier than you know the naming convention in Photoshop, a little bit less confusing as well. Um, so basically I recommend using the attach feature in uh, Cartoon Animator 4. Okay, so we can continue on, like Nose Neris, just attach that to uh, Nose Bridge 2. Uh, we can select Nose Tip and attach that to Nose Neris. And we can take Teeth L and attach that to Nose Tip and teeth R, and also attach that to nose tip, okay? So nose tip is gonna have two children in the hierarchy here. And now if we select nose and move it together, we can move it all as one component, but we also have the freedom to, you know, move them separately, okay? So nose nearest, we can just move it like that, and there you go. Okay, so that's exactly what we want when we're, when we're doing that 360 head creation. So let's go back into the 360 degree head creator, and let's fix this. Let's get this uh, all settled out here. So I'm gonna go back to the quick turn head setup, a quick head turn setup rather. We're gonna set those angles back to 22 and back to 22. And let's take a look at how this is different now. So we can, we can now take uh, the different layers. We can take uh, you know bridge one and move it over here. Bridge two, move it over here. And we can take the nose nearest, move it over here. And the nose tip, move it over here to create that, uh, again, this perspective from the inside there. And we'll take this tusk and just kind of uh, make it a little bit smaller because this can be a little bit off more in the distance and move it up here a little bit. And there we go. And do the same thing for the right side. Okay, so bridge, we'll take it over here. Nose, uh, bridge two, bring it over here. Neris, bring it over here. And you can see what we're kind of getting at here. And take that tusk and, uh, oops, let's make it smaller a little bit. And it's off in the distance. All right, and then we have like, you know, down and up. We can uh, mess around with that a little bit later. Uh, we'll, we'll do that more in the, in the advanced uh, turn head setup. So if we preview now, now we have this, okay? Looks a lot better than it did before. You can see right here, that's the kind of result that we want. And that's how you can use those components, um, attach them to each other and create the result that you want. So let's go ahead and apply this. And let's do the more advanced head setup in the 360 head creator here. So let's go to uh, to down and uh, up here. Um, up, we can just go ahead and take this tuft of hair. Let's use the transform tool here and just kind of make it a little bit shorter since we're looking at him from a different angle. Put those ears up and make them shorter as well. Okay, just like that. There we go. Right, we can take these uh, we can take these uh, nose components here and you know bring them up a little bit further as well, one by one. 
right? So you can see how it's very useful to have these uh, components all separate, okay? You can create a different perspective here for the nose as well. And then for down, you know, very similar thing. We'll just take those uh, ears, bring them up a little bit. Oops, there we go. And we can even just take all the nose components down here as well, make them a little, little bit more elongated. And zoop, there we go. And there we go. All right, and then we have the left, we have the left done, we have the right done. Now the problem here is that if you go to like the, the bottom left, for example, and we start to, let's go ahead and preview right now. You can see that we're gonna have sort of a kind of a clipping on the bottom there with the mouth. Okay, so right here it's gonna kind of clip like that. Uh, and that's because when we go down to here, um, bottom left and, and top right, for example, it's not gonna be ideal. It's, kind of, it's gonna kind of distort and bend the, the nose, okay? So in situations like this, what you may want to do, is I'll stop the preview, what you may want to do um, is you may want to uh, rotate the uh, head as opposed to kind of morphing the facial features. So for top left, for example, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just go ahead and take the, the one from the left I'm going to copy it. So we can go ahead and copy, and we'll select the, the left one here. You can see the little eyedropper tool appears, and then paste it up here. And then up here, what I'm going to do is just kind of take the head, the whole head, or the whole face rather, and rotate it, okay, just like this. Kind of tilt it up left, and then same thing. We'll go ahead and copy um, left and paste it down here, in the bottom left, and rotate it downwards like that. Okay, and then same thing on the on the right side. So right angle point, we'll copy that one and paste it right here. And then here we'll just uh, rotate it slightly up. And then we'll copy again and paste the bottom right and rotate slightly like this. So now if we preview, we're gonna have a result like this. Okay, it looks a lot better. We don't have that clipping on the bottom and we don't have the distortion of the nose as much, okay? But we still have, you know, the nice rotation movement of the head. Okay, and that's really about all there is to it, guys. Um, just that's how to create, you know, uh, unconventional uh, characters with unconventional facial features, such as a long nose, and still get realistic 360 head rotation results. All right, so thanks so much for watching, and uh, hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial. Make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and our learning center on our website. And I hope to see you in the next video.